Welcome again to another podcast, my friends. So we have been doing this pandemic for a little over 17 months now. And I say we're doing, because that's exactly what we're doing. We are working our way through this pandemic. And I have identified a lot of things. And I want you to work with me here for the next few moments that I will try to create a discussion where I can stimulate your mind, your thinking, and somehow, um, you know, uh, prompt you to either respond, send me a comment, or have a discussion at work with your family, with your friends, co-workers, you know, something like that. But um, as we do this pandemic, as we live it out, what I've been noticing is that a lot of people are changing, a lot of people are changing and to change towards this new norm is a good thing. However, we must be careful that our change in the pandemic, it is not to weaken our faith, one, and it's not to cause us to make silly or wrong decisions. So let's dive into the conversation, right? The pandemic has created an ability for us to not socialize as normal. Now, I believe, um, you know, that human contact is so important, that we've got to find a way to be in the presence of people, um, looking at body language, uh, picking up the vibes, you know, and so forth from from group conversation, families and so forth. It's like a relationship, you know. You can date long distance, okay, but it can't be forever. It can't be for too long, <laughs> you know. At some point in time, if you truly care about that person and if you're not a, 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 a robot, you know, some people literally have a robot spirit. It's like they have no affection, no emotions. So, um, you know, they can even be with the person they say they love and they'll sit there, eat, talk and uh, don't care if if they get a hug, don't care if they get a scratch in the back, you know, pull in the air, you know. Uh, you, you know, the stuff we do when we love each other and so forth. Some people don't do that, you know. And you may say, Henry, well, you don't have to do all of that. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. For me, um, I'm a very affectionate person. Um, you may say I'm needy. Okay, that's fine. But there's a group of us, we need to be hugged. <laughs> You know, we need to feel that we're important, that we matter, that you enjoy the, you know, our presence and so forth. So going back to what I was saying is, um, you know, so many people, because we don't have this, this human contact anymore, I believe that what is happening to our society, we have been desensitized to people's sensitivity to people's need. That is dangerous. So I want all of you who have tuned into this podcast to begin to think, how do you how do you feel about your neighbor? And when I say your neighbor, I'm saying the people who are in your space. How do you feel about your spouse? How do you feel about the person you're dating? How do you feel about your parents, your siblings, you know, family members, relatives, friends? You know, how do you feel about even your church family? How do you feel? You know, um, do you feel a sense of, gosh, you know, I miss them. Um, I, 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 I long to fellowship with my family. I long to fellowship with my, my church family. I long to, to uh, be normal with my spouse in some sense. Like, for example, um, you know, we can't travel to many places anymore right now. I get all of that. But our uniqueness, our ability to create unique moments in this crisis, you know, finding ways to reconnect. Because if you don't, what is going to happen is it is going to desensitize you to what should be normal. I have to tell you, I don't know if you're picking this up, but I see where people 
are getting irritable, if you will, and to the point where what should matter the most to them no longer matters, or they don't longer matter, I should say, though those things or those things don't matter to them anymore. Let's put it that way. All right. Um, I firmly believe we've got to find a way. And I want to talk to people who can connect with what I'm saying. We have got to find a way to stop being so cold to one another. We've got to find a way to not allow the clutter, the noise to distract us, to pull us into conversations that are unhealthy, to bring us into environments that makes us feel it's normal to do what honestly is damaging. Think about that. I mean, and, and you know, here's the sad thing. When, when you are heading down, down a wrong path, and you don't recognize it, that's dangerous because then there is no hope, watch this, for a turnaround. There's no hope for a change. I never want my life to be of such that when I'm making mistakes, when I'm doing things out of the will of God, when I'm at a place where I am functioning and I know that is in error or that is wrong, that I, my conscience or my ability to pick up in the spirit realm that I'm off. If, if I don't have that, that is bad. And what I see in our society today, I honestly see where people have lost their sensitivity to hearing from the Holy Spirit, especially Christians, hearing from the Holy Spirit now. I don't know if it's because we're trying to hustle to, you know, to get through this pandemic, to make uh, ends meet and so forth. Why? But we, we, have, we have lost it. And I believe I heard a preacher um, on one of the stations the other day was preaching how the enemy has infiltrated the church, has gotten into the body of Christ. And it's true, ambushed the church. And now uh, the enemy's functioning, doing things in the church that we no longer watch this we're no longer paying attention to the schemes of the devil and identifying our true opponent. Now we turn on one another. Oh, now we turn on one another. Now we're angry. Now we're bitter against each other. Now we're divided over um, theological um, beliefs. You know, we believe this, we believe that. Now with this pandemic, we are divided over the whole pandemic. You know, listen, I've been pastoring for 30 years and I am shocked at some of the behavior of God's people. Love them to death, but I am totally shocked at their behavior. And here's the sad part about it. They don't even know. And if you dare to correct them, oh my God, they'll have your head. I mean, they are so blindsided and bewitched by Satan that their thought process, they think that is perfect, that they are right. But I've identified, man, goodness, man, I, I, I've seen it now as a pastor. And I think we need to step up to the plate. Those of us who, who really want to be on God's side, to recognize that there is an enemy there's an enemy. If you can't listen, if you cannot identify the schemes of the devil, you will be a single person operating in life, living your life, not knowing what kind of line of defense that you ought to put up because you don't know how to fight. See, the U.S. military is not going to send someone overseas to fight who've never been in training. You have to be in training. And the training is what's going to help you that when the real life situations occur, you're able to respond appropriately. And I just believe right now what I see is people running the affairs of their lives and not focusing on who the true enemy is. That first of all, Satan doesn't want your relationship to succeed. First of all, anytime you say you love, He's going to attack that. 
Sometimes we make it so personal. It's our beauty, you know, it's our shape, it's our sexiness, it's it's our masculinity, whatever it may be. That's, that's listen, don't focus on that. Because what the enemy doesn't want is for you to truly be in love. So therefore, he's going to come up with all kinds of stuff. And if you're not careful, you forfeit what God has designed for you. So here it is, give you an example. All right, you know, you're dating someone and you truly love the person. Satan says, okay, I don't want this love to grow. And listen, whoo, this, you're going to love this. The only way love can be perfected, it must be tested. Let me say it again. The only, I, I got to write this down because I don't want to forget this, man. I don't want to forget this. I don't want to forget this. For those of you who are watching, I know you're laughing at me. This was so good. This was so good. Oh, my goodness. The only way love will be perfected, it's when it is tested. Yes, that's it. The only way your love in a relationship will be perfected, it must be tested. So, of course, you're going to get tested. Your fiancé is going to be get, uh, tested with other women, with um, disagreements, um, personality conflicts, you know, family drama, his side of the family. Your side. It's going to be tested. Why, why, why do you think that's happening? It is to test the love that you have for him or for her. Just to see if the love that you have is conditional or it is, if you will, purified for eternity. It is an eternal love. It is not subjected to certain things, you know, as, as 1 Corinthians 13 says, love doesn't seek its own. It's not what it can get. So th this you have to think. All the single people out there, I want you to understand this. When you think that you're in a relationship and your relationship is ups and down and it's going crazy and so forth, you have concluded that, oh, I guess this, this is not the guy for me. This is not the girl for me. Now, in some cases, yes, that's the truth. You know, there are some signs and watch those signs. Those signs will indicate that maybe that's not the right person. Don't go any further with it. But but you have to look at the whole picture here. Sometimes it's also a sign that says, wait a minute, maybe you need to react a different way. Maybe it is to test you. It is to strengthen you. It is to get you to a place where you begin to think and say, okay, my response is going to be in a way that is going to strengthen my love for the other person. You're married. It's the same thing, right? You know, um, if you don't perfect that love through the test, right? And so many people, now I, I'll be the first to tell you, so many people have ruined their marriage simply because they, watch this, they don't know who the true opponent is. They look at the woman and they say, she's the devil. She looks at the man, he's the devil. So the devil stands on the sideline. And while you are arguing about money, while you are arguing about sex, the lack thereof, while you are arguing about his kids or her kids, while you're arguing about in-laws and outlaws and everything, the devil is standing by. You all go complain. You all, you all fuss at the money and so forth. You all get ticked off over what she did, he did, and so forth. As long as you cannot find common ground on the area of love, I'm fine. Devil speaking. I'm fine because I'm going to whip you every time. I'm going to kill what God had designed. I'm going to kill it because you selfish and you're full of pride and you're not going to give in and she's not going to give in and she's full of pride and so forth. So the devil stands by and says, okay, I know God ordained this. I know he put it together, but I'm going to kill that. I'm going to kill it. So he lets your feelings and the way you process things, going back to what I was saying from the beginning, what's hurting most people today and what's causing them not to succeed in life or to have a better life, it's because the way they process things, it's the way they think. You know, the scripture says there's a way that seems right to a man. Honestly, to the person, it 
feels right, but it ends up in a disaster. So I want to help you today on this podcast to examine yourself. You know, the, the, the unfortunate thing for me doing this is to know that there's some of you are going to listen to this. You're going to be turned off by it. Some of you have already locked off, you know, uh, and changed, you know, listen to something else. And others will listen to it to the end. And you had an opportunity to change. You had, God is using me to equip you, to show you another side of being better, to show you perhaps what's blocking what God is sending your way, but you're forfeited that opportunity because, again, of yourself, just like how people are processing things today. We have become so complacent, especially for those of us who are kingdom citizens. We have lost it. We have lost our sense. In fact, we have become so self-driven that we no longer see that we are a community of people who need each other, uh, who need each other. Whenever you get to the place where you feel you don't need anybody, you want nobody to talk to you, counsel you, or give you instructions, and you're self-sufficient, and people need you, but you don't need them, that is, I'm telling you, it is dangerous ground to, 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 to tread on. Dangerous. So I am suggesting to all of you who have tuned in today to begin to, that's if you really want to create this positive change that I'm talking about, to examine yourself and begin to think, what can you do right now? What can you do right now? Forget about people. Don't, don't think about anybody now. Don't think about the cause of what happened and Get rid of that now. What can you do right now to turn you around so that you can have a better outcome in your life? Think about that. As a single man, single woman, a dating person, a married person, a business person, right? A person that's going to school. Uh, what can you do? Uh, what can you do? A spiritual leader. What can you do right now? to change because you have to get away from what you're hearing that is blocking you from hearing from God. Please don't miss that. You, you got to get away from what you're hearing because what you're hearing right now perhaps may not be healthy for you, the company you keep. Can I just be honest? Sometimes you need to stop hearing yourself. Yes, we hear things, our voices. We hear our own minds and spirit talking to us. And if it doesn't align itself up to the agenda of God, you are not to listen. Sometimes your, your flesh, the Bible calls it, your mind, your flesh, your spirit, will tell you certain things or make you to believe certain things. And you are convinced that you are right. And in reality, you're not. You have to be willing. I'm telling you today, you have to be willing to say, I want to turn around. I want to change my life. I want to have a, oh, here's the key, a different perspective. You have to have a different perspective in life. Because if you don't, especially now that there's a new norm, because things are never going to go back to the way they were. Now you have to begin to think, how do you move your life forward? How do you begin to think? Stop blaming people. Stop looking at other issues and people and reasons in the past of why you should continue on that path. Because if you're like me, I had to take recently inventory of my own life, you know, and, and see the areas that I need to improve on, areas I need to change in and so forth. And I realized that that is so, such a healthy thing. You can never have a new perspective if you don't own up to the fact that, watch this, you don't know it all, that you may not be right. 
that you may not be on the right side. You see, a, a new perspective requires you to say to yourself, okay, I need to get more information. I need to see the other side. When you think you have accomplished or have arrived, as the Apostle Paul said, you know, um, then you, you, you don't open up yourself for new discoveries. You know, here at our ministry, we're, we're declaring that this is the year of new discoveries. And, oh, I had no idea that when God gave me this theme last, last year, from around the summer of last year, I got it and I unveiled it to the church on December 31st. I had no idea that we were going to encounter a year, which actually, sorry, was the year 1990, it was 99. Uh, what am I saying? <laughs> 99. Uh, uh, 2019, sorry. Yes, 2019, when I un when I uh, God gave me the, uh, the theme for the, the year 2020, and then the pandemic hit. All right, so we're thinking that uh, we're going to get through the pandemic. Then the end of 2020, um, December 31st, I unveiled the topic, the year of new discoveries. And, and God gave that those two words to me, new discoveries. Because you see, we can rediscover things, meaning that, hey, it was there all the time. But these are hidden things that we had no idea. They were there. It's just new discoveries for us. And I found out, and I don't know who this is going to help, but I found out that the best discovery that I have ever encountered during this pandemic was discovering me. Oh, oh, I thought I knew me. I thought I knew my potential. I thought I knew my total abilities and so forth. This pandemic has brought out some of the best. Oh, now there was some stuff that came out that, you know, come on now. But overall, this pandemic has created a better leader in me. This pandemic has changed my whole perspective on life and has caused me to be more appreciative of, of who God is and, and how blessed I am. I mean, the list goes on and on. I have really gotten to a place where I am better, believe it or not, I am better today during the pandemic than I was, say, prior to the pandemic. Why? Because it gave me a new perspective. Some of the things I thought I needed. Oh, don't let me go there. Somebody can relate to that. Some of the things I, I really thought I needed those things, I'm realizing I don't really need that. The pandemic has given me a new perspective of, of, of what we call success and, and achievements, right? That you can have, listen, you can work 30 years to achieve something and lose it in 10 seconds. Come on now. So you have to have a new perspective in life. Do not let this pandemic cause you to be the same or even worse than you were prior to the pandemic. Have a new perspective. Do not let the enemy cloud your mind where you get to a place right now where you are not able to discern that he's up to something. He's out to get my stuff. He's out to get my blessing. He's out to get my healing. He's out to get the doors that God's opening up for me. He's out to get my future stability. You, you, you got to have a new perspective in life to say, wait a minute, if God promised me some things. Why am I not having them? Is it self-sabotage? Hello. You know, sometimes we, like I said before, we point fingers all the time. You, 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 you. But sometimes we need to say, it's me, 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 me. Let's have that perspective where we can honestly say, okay, me, self, you got to change. <laughs> you know, if I, I need everything that God has for me before I leave this planet, you have to change. I'm not putting the pointing the fingers at anybody else. I need to change. I need to have a different perspective to figure out how do I do things differently? The, the, you know, do I need to change my inner circle, having new friends? And, you know, I, I let me deal with that a little bit. I, I don't have 
a lot of people in my inner circle. Not that it's a bad thing or a good thing. You know, some people can say I got 50 people as my inner circle. Uh, I'm not one of them. Uh, one thing I can tell you, um, I am a loyal friend. Uh, people know me. Loyalty is key to me. Loyalty is key to me. I'm a loyal friend. Um, I will never, ever turn my back on you as long as you embrace me. Now, if you push me away, have nothing to do with me, okay, fine. You know, I'm not going to chase nobody. I'm not going to beg nobody to let me love you because I am I can love you from a distance. I can love you from a distance. I can befriend you from a distance. Hey, how you doing? God bless you, you know, and so forth. But loyalty is key to me. But I find that a lot of people today um, have allowed the pressure of life the pressure of life to cause their loyalty to, to come in quest, in, into question. Don't let that happen to you. Don't let what people do or say. When you, when you make a commitment in your inner circle to say you love that person, you are there for that person, even when that person, watch this, does wrong, embrace them in the spirit of love. However, here's the way out of this. If that person is arrogant and doesn't want to make peace with you or whatever, fine. That's okay. That's on, as long as you know in your heart that what, what you did, you know. See, because listen, there are people who are professional liars. There are people who are professional tricksters, right? And they'll go out there and they'll say all kinds of stuff. Fine. Fine. Sometimes it's got to shut your mouth. There ain't no battle can be won until God handle it. I learn. Let God fight my battles. He has the last word. But check your inner circle to see the people that are there. Are they loyal? Are they loyal to you like you're loyal to them? Because sometimes it is your inner circle that creates this this inability to have a different perspective because you've been drowned out by bad vibes. So check. And don't feel bad if you're left there with two, three people. Don't feel bad. I said Jesus had 12 disciples and to the point where he only pulled three to go a little further with him to go pray. And even when he left those three to say, just watch with me, they, they fell asleep. People are people. One of the things, I want to help those of you who are disappointed because people have disappointed you. People have hurt you. Somebody now have tuned in and, you know, you've been hurt bad. But listen, don't take it personal. And I know it's hard. I, I, and I'm not talking like Henry's got it all together. No, it's hard. It is hard. It is hard to have a different perspective on a relationship and how to create new friendship when, when you have been hurt. Uh, by people, betrayed, and so forth. But the, if you take it upon yourself and put all that weight on you, it will drain you. Have a different perspective of life. People are people. People will do stupid stuff, silly stuff. People are selfish, self-centered, bitter. Some people are broken. Some people are toxic. And the list goes on and on. And, and you know what? You got you to gotta learn love them. You gotta look. And then you know what? People are going to talk. I have gotten, listen, I mean, I lived my life for a good period of time trying to be a people pleaser, trying to, you know, and I realized that, you know what? The same mouth that bless you is the same mouth going to curse you later. And, you know, as the thing is, as long as I know, and, and you need to live this way, when you live to please God, not that you will always get it right. But when you're sincere in your heart in serving God, that's all that matters. Live for God. And for people, listen, don't take it personal. Let it go. Let it go. Love them. Let them die going to their grave. Miserable, angry, bitter. That when you meet your God, Ha! 
at the end of the day, when you meet your God, you can say with a clear conscience, God, I forgave, I let it go. You didn't have them up in your heart. That's it. Have a different perspective in life. Do not let this pandemic and this new norm, because we don't know what the future holds, but don't ever let what's happening in your life right now cause you to react in a different way, an unchristlike way, or live a life that is unpleasing to God. You got it within you. I believe in you, and you ought to believe in yourself. Whatever you are doing, give it your best shot, especially if it's to glorify God. Give it your best shot. Don't let people and their drama change you. Have a different perspective. Live your best life now. I love you. This is Henry Fernandez saying thank you so much for tuning in on today's podcast. I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.